Well, compared to Singapore, Bangladesh's handling of its finances has become news fodder, especially now that some hackers were able to steal $81 million from the country's central bank. U.S. law enforcement is now working with Bangladeshi authorities to probe one of the biggest transnational cyber theft cases in the world. And their investigation is leading them to the Philippines. Barnaby Lowe reports. Six million, 30 million, all in U.S. dollars, 19 million and 25 million. Um, did this not raise an alarm? That is just one of the many questions senators investigating the case have over how $81 million stolen off of Bangladesh's account in the Federal Reserve Bank of New York ended up in the Philippines, to which most of the answers have been... Sir, sorry, but um, I would like to invoke my right to um, self-incrimination. The first big problem we have is that the anti-money, the Bank Secrecy Act is so strict that banks are not even allowed to talk about any activity in a private bank account. So here's my experience with banking here in the Philippines. When you have to withdraw over $1,000, the teller doesn't actually have the authority to release that money immediately to you. There is a so-called override authority coming from someone higher up, and that's just $1,000. What we're talking about here is tens of millions of dollars. So far, only the branch manager of the local bank that transacted the stolen funds, Maya De Guito, has been charged by the Anti-Money Laundering Council. It's the reason her lawyer says she's only told her side of the story in a closed-door session with senators. The story starts with four allegedly fictitious bank accounts opened in Manila. Once hackers were able to successfully take out $81 million from the Bangladeshi government's offshore account, they were transferred to these four accounts withdrawn in a matter of days, with over $50 million going to casinos. And that is where the trail ends. Casinos in the Philippines are not required to report suspicious transactions. In the casino, the money gets lost, and if you get a check from the casino saying the amount of $5 million, you say, see, I won this in the casino. Okay. It then it becomes legal. The source of the funds now becomes legal. The fears that the Philippines could get blacklisted by the Financial Action Task Force. If that happens, the cost of sending money to the Philippines may rise. The country's remittance-dependent economy could suffer. And that's why Senator Osmeña says they're moving as quickly as they can to seal cracks in the country's financial system and save it from a potential disaster. Barnabillo, CCTV, Manila.